Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of our Terraria modding tutorial series. Today we're going to be doing something fairly basic. We're going to be learning how to create a new mod from scratch in 1.4 because it has changed a little bit since 1.3. So the first thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to launch Terraria and you're going to want to check the bottom right of your screen. For me, since I've already enabled developer mode, there will be no button that says enable developer mode. But for you, there might be a button there that says that. If there is, make sure to click it and download all of the buttons that say download on there so that way you have all of the important libraries and code bases that you need to actually get started modding. Okay, once you have that done, let's go ahead and click on Workshop. So this is where you're going to be developing all of your mods. So you can see we have our Manage Mods, Develop Mods, Download Mods, our Mod Packs, Importing Worlds, and Using Resource Packs. And you can probably guess what we're going to be doing. We're going to be developing mods. So over here, if you click on that page, you'll probably have nothing show up here. But since I've already developed uh, a few mods, I have my mods that I can build uh, and publish over here. So over at the bottom, there are two very important buttons. The first one is open sources. This just opens up the folder in which your mod files are actually stored in. So if I click here, you can see I uh, now have access to my archery mod, uh, riptide mod, spear overhaul, and sorcery overhaul mods, uh, where all my items and code files are going to be stored. And the second button is the create mod button. So if we click this, we'll get a new interface pop-up. The first thing it's going to ask is the mod name. So this is going to be the name in the code. So we're not going to give this any spaces. We'll just call this test mod. And the display name of your mod, you can change this at any point in time, uh, but we're just going to call this uh, 1.4 test mod for now. Ah, I'm putting quotation marks because I'm used to uh, <laughs> coding with strings. So we'll just say 1.4 test mod for now. And the author is uh, Riptide. And whenever you create a new mod, they also give you uh, an example item. So this is going to be the basic sword. We'll just call this our test sword. Okay, awesome. And we'll click create. And you can see that your mod should now show up. So if I scroll down, you can see well enough we have our test mod here uh, that we can press build and build and reload. Obviously, there's nothing actually in our mod yet besides that test sword we just created. So let's go ahead and go into our uh, mod sources folder by clicking the open sources and then clicking on our new mod, our test mod, and then we get uh, a whole bunch of other cool stuff we can change. So first off, we have our build.txt. So whenever you want to publish your mod, you have to increase the version. So right now it's 0 0.1. If we wanted to, uh, if we wanted to publish this to the Steam Workshop, we would have to increase the version and then build and reload before we publish. And here you can also change the display name of the mod. So we can just call this uh, the basics or something like that. And you can also change the author. So that's a, a handy bit of information. And in here you can change the description of your mod. And next we have the icon. So by default, the icon is just a golden border. Uh, which is the display icon for the mod in the browser and also in the Steam Workshop. So make sure you uh, follow the correct dimensions of this sprite when you are creating your icon for the Steam Workshop. And next we have our uh, .cs file of our mod. So every mod is generated with a .cs file, which is essentially just your core uh, mod class which if you are unfamiliar with C Sharp, then you should definitely go watch some tutorials if you are a beginner. But we don't have to worry about that right now. now the last thing you're going to want to know is the .cs proj file. So this is your actual project file. And if we open this, I'll open this with Visual Studio 2022. And if you need help downloading Visual Studio, uh, you can actually go ahead and go into the link into the description. And I'll put a tutorial on how to set up Visual Studio uh, perfectly for Terraria modding. But once you've opened your .cs proj file with Visual Studio, you'll actually notice on the right side of your screen, you now have uh, all of your subfolders within your mod, and even the build.txt and description.txt, uh, which is incredibly helpful for easily going through a large amount of items and folders. Like, I can just go into my items folder right here on the right-hand side and double-click on the testor.cs and just immediately open it up. And if I wanted to be like, hmm, okay, where is my, uh, like, I don't know, metal burst bow or something like that. I wouldn't have to then go into here, double click this folder and then scroll down and try and find it. I could just look on the right hand side of my screen and it would be there. Okay, awesome. So we're not going to go over how to make the sword because this is going to focus on actually creating the mod and uh, getting everything up and running. So now that we've changed some stuff in our mod, let's go ahead and build our mod. So if we go into our workshop and we go into our develop mods, we'll find our test mod and we can click build. Okay, so now that we've changed some things in our mod, let's go ahead and head back into our mod sources and we'll go and build our test mod. So 
that was really fast because there's really nothing to build in our mod. We have like a single item and a single PNG file. So the building and reloading process is going to be practically instantaneous, which is very, very nice for starting out. Uh, but building essentially just compiles all the code in your project and it will give you any errors and compile errors that you find and uh, it'll tell you where they are so you can go and find them and fix them and when you build and reload this is something that you want to reserve for uh, when you actually are about to test your mod because building and reloading doesn't just compile the code it also compiles all of the assets and the sound files and the art files which can take a lot longer of a time than just building and compiling the code but we can go ahead and build and reload because building and reloading will also update our description and our build.txt files that we previously had changed and just like that, you're actually ready to go and uh, publish your mod to the Steam Workshop. So what you want to do to publish is click the publish icon here, and you'll probably get a really weird uh, freezing uh, of your game just for a moment. I'm not sure why there's a, a freeze when you click on the publish button, but uh, it's not too big of a deal. And you can go ahead and read the terms of service. You probably won't have to worry about this too much unless your mod has some uh, very risque content. But for the most part, you don't really have to think about that. But let's go ahead and check out the other options. So we have our image file here. So you can click on this to uh, load a different image other than the base icon image in your mod. But it's best to actually go uh, and replace this icon.png that's in your mod folder directly because that way it will also show up uh, in the browser of Tmod Loader and not just the Steam Workshop. So then there's the visibility which means this mod will only be visible to friends or uh, to private people with a specific link to that Steam Workshop page. This can be nice if you just want to have uh, a little mod for your friends. And down here you can tag your mod so when people go to find new mods uh, on the mod browser or on the Steam Workshop they can filter them by tags and you can just tag them as new content, uh, utilities, library, audio tweaks, and a whole bunch of cool stuff. So for this one, we'll just say private because we don't really have anything in this mod uh, that's worth testing out. So if we press publish, you'll actually notice that it says this mod already exists on the workshop. And that is because our mod is called test mod. And I can almost guarantee you that there's someone out there who's already published uh, a public mod called test mod. And there is no way that no one has ever made a mod called test mod before. So you're going to have to probably find uh, a more unique name for your mod before you publish it to make sure that you don't have the same exact name as another mod because that does not work in terms of code. But that's all you have to do in order to make a mod and whenever you build and reload that also will uh, compile the code and allow you to test your mod. So if we go ahead and enter a world here we'll take out our cheat sheet and we'll grab our test sword and you can also see they generate a very basic PNG file as well. And you can swing this around, uh, check out all of the stuff that you maybe changed for this sword. I don't know, maybe you wanted to customize it. But yeah, that's how you can get started making a mod. It's actually incredibly easy, but sometimes for people who haven't gone through the process yet, it can uh, be a little bit confusing. If you didn't know, I'm also a game developer, and if you want to support my work and videos and also my games, you can check out my Patreon with a link in the description. Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.